But today, we're gonna focus on installation of a 10 inch porthole. So I've measured out just where I want these holes. I started by making my measurements on the inside of the forward bulkhead. The round window cutout is centered between the vertical metal frames of the cargo trailer. Before I begin, though, just, this is how large of a hole you're going to be drilling. So I'm just going to use uh, uh, the pilot here to make us a nice hole. Drilling a pilot hole from the inside out eliminates a need to make blind measurements from the outer skin of the cargo train. So I know just where I want to put this hole saw. Now trace the inner diameter of the porthole bezel. Tape off all areas where your hole saw may touch the metal. As I start cutting, I'm actually drilling in a counterclockwise direction. The artist tape helps keep inadvertent scratches from occurring on the cargo trailer's nice finished paint job. Be sure to periodically spray WD-40 over the work area. This will help keep those hole saw teeth nice and sharp. Once you have a nice groove showing the entire circumference of the hole to be cut, switch to forward or clockwise rotation of the drill motor. Cut through the aluminum and the forward bulkhead. This segment of the video shows you what to expect while operating the drill and hole saw. All of this work is being done while standing on a step stool. Note the height of the drill motor rig using my body as the reference point. So you want to be sure you have complete control. I'm keeping that rig no higher than my shoulders and never below the abdominal region of my torso. Cutting plywood with a large hole saw is about the same as cutting metal. Be sure you use this step of counterclockwise rotation of the hole saw. My body positioning is neutral to slightly forward. I can safely apply a small amount of forward pressure to the drill motor hole saw rig. Try forward, but keep the pressure off that piece of wood just a little. The geometry of it is you want to keep that drill motor perpendicular to the face of the cargo trailer. If you feel like you're getting tired, be sure to stop.
Never push too hard on a hole saw this large and be sure you have total control of that half inch drill motor. Next, you'll need to make a two piece backing plate. I am using some scrap pine and drawing the inner diameter as well as the outer diameter of the bezel onto the backing plates. Be sure you have a surface area of at least one half inch beyond the outer diameter of the porthole bezel. You may have wondered what those small screws were for on the inner diameter of the backing plate. I'm going to attach a string to each side of that two-piece backing plate. The string is so I will not lose a piece of my backing plate down between the plywood and the outer skin of the cargo trailer. Once you have applied glue, put some clamps on each piece of your backing plate and let that glue dry at least three or four hours. Now it's time to cut a small keyway and drill holes for your mounting hardware to secure the porthole in place on the cargo trailer. Remove the safety string and screws from the work area. Put up a little bit more artist tape on the bottom side of your work area and use your bezel as a template to draw the remaining cuts and drilling areas needed to mount that portal. Here I'm using a jigsaw to cut out the keyway. There's a lot of vibration going on, so the artist tape helps keep any scratches from occurring on the outer skin of the cargo trailer. Temporarily install your porthole. Check that it fits properly into the keyway as well as all of your screws will go through both the outer skin and the inner hull to mount that porthole in place. Every porthole install is a little different. Here's an example of what you might run up against. I need to remove 3 sixteenths of thickness from that plywood by one inch all the way around the diameter of that portal. This would all depend on the thickness of the plywood installed by the manufacturer. Yeah, I don't know if it, the camera got that, so I'm going to explain it again. I'm just going to use a one inch paddle bit first to get down one layer of plywood. I started by using a Dremel tool but found that a paddle bit, one inch paddle bit, works much better and much faster and then come back through with the Dremel tool just to smooth it all out. So far I've been able to keep it nice and clean. We're going to go ahead and caulk this in. Always use a polyurethane based caulking. This stuff works pretty good. And we're just going to caulk it. I'm going to start right here. The fact is, it just sticks better to smooth surfaces and plastics. Put a good bead around right here. Just 
on this insert piece of wood that I put in there. The adhesion strength between plastic and metals is far superior to that of water-soluble caulking. I'm thinking that's going to be pretty good. And then we're going to put a bead out here. Put caulking on the keyway of the portal as well. I'm going to put one more bead right around the edge of this. Slide the porthole neck into the bulkhead. Then align the bezel with the keyway down as to fit over the waterway channel of the porthole. Use bevel headed number six machine screws that are two inches long to go through that bezel and tighten them down using number six hardware. Once you've cinched up and tightened all those screws, that outside bezel is now tight to the outer skin of that forward bulkhead. And remember, the type of caulking I'm using here is not water soluble. Clean off all excessive caulking close, yeah. using mineral spirits. WD-40 works pretty good too. So it's pretty easy cleanup as long as you have mineral spirits. Make sure that you have mineral spirits. Otherwise, this stuff will not come off easy.